week, uh, Pastor Aaron talked about, and I got to get us caught up. He talked about the relationship between Jacob and Esau. And if you missed it, I encourage you to jump on our website, listen to the message. He had a giant bowl of red beans, red lentil soup. And he talked about how Esau despised his birthright and sold his birthright to his brother, Jacob, uh, just because he was hungry. He settled for uh, the in the moment sort of uh, encouragement in the moment uh, thing instead of waiting for the blessing that was to come instead of the good things that God had. So after this moment, Isaac is go- growing old. So I'm going to give you the quick, fast, this is everything to get us to our story today. Isaac, their dad, is growing old, and he's getting ready to die, and so he wants to be able to bless his sons. He, he doesn't understand what happened with the birthright, despising, and all that stuff, so he's going, i got to bless my oldest, well, which was just by a few seconds, Esau. And so there's a situation where he can't see very well, and Jacob actually tricks his dad, and he receives Esau's blessing, which... Again, he despises the birthright. He should have received it, but the dad didn't understand that. And so he, he tricks his dad, gets it. Uh, Jacob receives the, the blessing, and then Esau shows up, and he's like, I'm ready for my blessing, dad. And dad's like, oh, I already gave it. You don't, you don't get as much. My bad. Uh, so Esau gets all mad because he tricked his dad, and he stole his blessing. He goes, I'm going to kill Jacob. So Jacob takes off, and he flees. He goes to his uncle Laban's house. Uncle Laban has two daughters, Rachel and Leah, and he re- he's got ooh he's got eyes for Rachel. Okay, he's like yes, Rachel, yes, and so he goes to his uncle. What, how, how 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 can I how can I receive Rachel as my wife? And he goes, you got to work for seven years for me, and then Rachel can be your wife. So he works seven years, and then wedding comes, boom boom boom, and Laban tricks him and says, just kidding, you can't marry Rachel because she's the youngest. You got to marry the oldest, uh, Leah first. And he's like what? Okay, and it has this whole crisis moment. And then Laban goes, but if you work another seven years for me, you can have Rachel. And he's like, deal. So 14 years go by. He gets two wives and he gets a whole bunch of kids. And it, there's a moment where it's time for him to leave uh, Laban's home and head back to the land that, hit, that God promised his family, the land of his dad, Isaac, who's now passed away. So he heads on the way back. As he's heading back to that land, to that, that promised area, that, that, that gift that God had given them, he hears that his brother Esau is coming out to get him. And he goes, whoa, this is not good. I tricked my brother. He's now 14 years hating me. He's probably going to try to kill me. So <laughs> I don't recommend this dads and husbands, but he sends his whole family ahead of him, and he says, you meet this angry brother of mine first, okay? But he gives them presents and gifts and all that stuff, and he's like trying to ease it. Well, while he sends them away, that night he falls asleep, he wakes up in the middle of the night, and he says that he wrestles with a holy being. He wrestles with God on the banks of the river, and he won't let God go until God blesses him. And God says, "Uh uh-uh, it's not going to be on how you do it. I'm going to do it my way. And so he touches Jacob's hip, and now he's going to walk with a limp the rest of his life. And not like the cool limp, like the owl sort of a limp. All those 40 sages, uh, we know what that pain is, right? When we start to, ooh, ah, you start to walk weird because, you know, but maybe it's God, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just old age. But God touches his hip. He gets a limp but he also gets God's blessing and God changes his name from Jacob to Israel. This is significant now because the family that he brought with him that he's going in with, he's got 12 sons and those 12 sons are gonna launch and start the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, this is a significant moment. This is a big moment. Now, I know you're going, well, what happened with Esau? And he sent his family. What happened? Esau's like, hey, man, it's been rough out here. I need my brother back. And so they reconcile in this moment. We know that it doesn't last for very long, but in that moment, he, they reconcile, and Jacob is able to go with all of his family uh, and set up in the land of his parents, his father, Isaac, and Abraham. So that brings us to Genesis 37. Let me just say this. All of Genesis has some amazing stories. It has some weird stories. It has some things that you go, what is going on? So this dude just married his cousins? Okay, it wasn't quite that weird back then, all right? There was some, you know, fourth removed, tenth, you know, divorce sort of weird stuff happening. So it's like, it was cool, all right? Um, And then also we learn in this moment that Joseph... Uh, there's a little bit of rivalry between the two sisters, Leah and Rachel, and he ends up also getting uh, their servants pregnant. So he's got four baby mamas, four of them, okay? 
good luck, brother. You know, like, I love my wife and I'm committed to one wife. I'm not gonna multiply that. That would just be too much for me to handle. But Jacob, he's got, he got four. Okay, so, so he's got 12 kids from four baby mamas and that lands us in Genesis 37, verse two. And I'm gonna read that today. It says this, this is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph, one of his sons, uh, was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks. He worked for his half-brothers, the son of his father's wives, Billa and Zipha. Those are the servants that I was talking about. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But this brother hated Joseph because his father loved him more than the rest. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night, Joseph had a dream, and when his brothers, uh, and then he told his brothers about it. They hated him even more. Listen, uh, he, uh, hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We're out in the field, tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you're gonna reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Soon Joseph had another dream. And again, he told his brothers about it. Come on, Joseph, learn from the first time. Don't tell your boys about it, but he does it anyways. He says, listen, I've had another dream. He says, the sun, moon, and 11 stars bowed low before me. This time he told the dream to his fathers as well, to his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? He asked, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. Dreams and jealousy. Have you ever met a jealous person? Let's raise our hand. Let me see. Have you ever met a jealous person? If you haven't, you probably haven't lived that long, okay? They are kind of miserable to be around, aren't they? You're like, dude, just be quiet. Like, come on, like, let it go, man. You know, like, now, do you think God wants us to be jealous? Okay, good. We're making progress here. So how do we keep jealousy from taking root in our lives? Well, first and simple, we start by celebrating what God is doing in others. The kingdom of God is not a, comp is not a competition. Let me say that the kingdom of God is not a competition of who's better, who does that better, blah, 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 all that stuff. God uses all of us and God has given each of us unique gifts and talents. When we celebrate the gifts and talents of others, it stops jealousy from taking root in our lives. So now that we've read our scripture, I'm gonna invite Pastor Jen and the CLF Kids team to come up and teach us what our big idea is all about. Let's welcome Pastor Jen and the CLF Kids team. Will not be as awkward as last week, I promise. But if you notice, I didn't have to do announcements today. So uh, mission was accomplished, right, Pastor Eric? Um, I just wanna welcome you guys to our family service. I absolutely love when we get to come together multi-generations, multi-ages. It's so great to have the adults get to see a little glimpse into what we do um, upstairs in Kids Church and for the kids to be around people in their lives who are the next generation who are loving Jesus and can show that to them. But uh, this morning, we're gonna introduce our big idea. And for those of you that don't know what a big idea is, every week in Kids Church, we have one big idea and we center everything we do around that big idea. And so this morning, our big idea is going to be all about how we need to like, look. Oh gosh. Oh. 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 You, you can't call them old. Oh my gosh. Are you locking your scooter? Oh. Uh, Broken past your lady. Okay, first of all, um, you guys that don't know <laughs> this person, um, this is Ned. Or Nedward. Ned, he's formal, Nedward. Um, he sometimes thinks that he um, helps us out. But how, how did you, I thought we had a safety team. Like, how are you in sure. here? Well, yeah. I went scootering upstairs. And I didn't see any of my little dudes. Right. So I thought I'd scoot her on down to the scary side. The, the what? 
The scary side, you know? Nope, I, I don't. Shut what are you talking about? What? All the old people. Oh, you can't say old. They're old. They're saged. That's All the saged word. people. <laughs> yeah. They're scary. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Um, Ned, I actually was just about to teach all of these saged people. Sage. Um, the big idea for this morning. Yeah. Say no more. I am glad I'm here just in time, Pastor Lady. I got this. Okay. Sure you do. All right. First of all, I actually need all of the kids, if you're in the room, to come on up and come up here, stand up here. So if you're one of our Sailor kids, come on up. Don't be shy. I know you're not shy because I have you all, and y'all are yeah. crazy. Uh, so come on up here. Little dudes. Little dudes. Yeah, little, oh, goodness. Hey. Don't diss Ned like that. Yeah, That's what I thought. Okay. Little dudettes. Little dudes. All little right. dudettes. That's Guys, right. When we do come our big on. Idea, what do we do with our big idea? I don't know. We say it. Yeah, we yell what? What's the big idea? Actually, you know who's here this morning? <gasps> Old teacher dude is here. And that one. So we need Mr. Blake and Mr. C to come on up as well. Mr. B. Oh, yeah. Come on up. Can I tell everybody? These are our extra staged. Can uh, I tell everybody why we call them Mr. B and Mr. C? Why? I am they afraid. Because they were born in BC. Oh, my God. <laughs> <no. laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I'm being trouble after. Okay, so, Mr. Blake, what do you say? Hey, what's, what's the big, big idea? idea? And then, kids, we do our big idea, right? And so we're going to put our big idea up on the screen. And um, That is a big screen. That is a big screen, yes. Yeah, so you're going to do the motions first. I don't know the we're big gonna, idea. You, it's, I won't hate, I'll congratulate. Oh. It rhymes, so you remember it, right? I think I can remember that. You got that. it? No. Okay. Okay. Um, how about you ju just do the motions? Whatever motions okay. come to your brain, but remember we're in church. Yes. Keep it Duh. PG. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Ah, okay. So we're going to go like this. Say, I won't hate. So kids okay, and girls, ready? I won't hate. I won't hate. Yep. And then we're going to do this dance move called the gritty. The what? The gritty, Pastor Jen. The gritty. Be like, ah, congratulate. Oh. <laughs> Just like okay. that. So it's going to be like, I won't hate. I won't hate. I'll congratulate. Oh, goodness. Wait, I need more gritty. Do they have to do it too? All the old people, the, old. the sage people, I'm okay. sorry. Okay, uh, so that means if you can stand up, stand up, right? Yes, yeah. stand to your Apparently, feet. Apparently, if you're 40, you can't stand up anymore. Although, I threw a frisbee on the 4th of July, and I still, I still can't lose my <laughs> This is so bad. So you're sage too. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, the big idea, the big, big idea. idea. Yes. Okay, gonna do it. So. Hey, what's the big idea? I won't, won't hate. hate. I'll, I'll congratulate. congratulate. Oh, that was oh, pretty that good. Oh, that was okay. That was pretty good. I've we need to do it one more one time. One more time. Okay. I need this section over here. I need a little more movement. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, you're gonna pause. You gotta get the noggin going, the bro. The noggin. Okay. Oh, goodness. You guys ready? BC, hit it. BC, oh, Hey, what's the big idea? I, I won't hate. hate. I'll, I'll congratulate. congratulate. Oh, that was me. Give yourself a hand. Nice. All right. Yeah. All right, little dudes, just pop a squat right you there. You can pop a squat right there. Front row seats. Yep, you got it. On what's the up? house. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's our big idea. I won't hate, I'll congratulate. Um, it's, it's great. So um, this actually has to do a lot with how we shouldn't be jealous of other people and the things that are happening in their lives, right? And that yeah. they're going well and the amazing thing that, that God could be doing in their lives. Yeah. You know, because it can be really easy to get really jealous. Shaw, yeah, Pastor Lady. I got a little jelly one time with my friend. You what? Okay. Um, I'm almost afraid to yeah. ask what happened. Well, it was totally gnarly. You see, he invented this new product, yeah. and he called it the booger box. Uh, <laughs> the what? The booger box. Duh. You know, it's a handy dandy little box that clips right on your belt. Oh. Okay. What? 
What is the booger box used for? Shaw, sure, to hold your boogers. Oh my word. I mean, here's the deal. Listen up. Okay. Sometimes, you know, you're digging for gold in the old schnoz, and then you don't have anywhere to put it. Right. And I'm not going to eat it. No offense to all you fellow booger eaters out there. Oh. I know who you are. <laughs> but that's just not for me. So yeah. he created a box that you can store all your boogers in, and it was amazing. I don't think that I have any words at all. I know, speechless, right? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with that. I'm speechless. Anywho, Anywho, his booger box took off like wildfire. He was getting tens of tens orders, of tens, orders? Oh, okay. and he was like raking in the dough. Wow, man was getting rich. Yeah, he was even giving some of his booger box money to missions. Oh, that's great for him, and I'm sure those missionaries loved having booger money. Yeah, except it wasn't great for me. What? I wanted to be rich. What? I wanted people to see me and say, hey, that's the booger man. But no, no one knew who Nedward was. And I didn't have enough money to gas up my scooter. Uh, you, you realize that scooter doesn't, okay, never mind. We're not going to even touch that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. See, I got totally jelly yeah. and I couldn't even talk to him. I was hating hard. You were hating hard. Sad day. Sad day indeed. Sad but, day. But you see, God doesn't want us to be jealous or jelly, as you, as you call it, of other people and things that God is doing. Instead, we need to celebrate his wins. I mean, think about it. He was able to do great things with this booger box money and yeah. help those missionaries. Sure, I'll have to remember that next time I'm feeling a little jelly. Yeah. How that goes, like, I won't hate. I won't hate. I'll congratulate. I'll congratulate. Well, yeah, little yeah. dudes, old dudes, oh, my word. sage dudes, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm learning. It's been really over, I gotta head out. Okay. Gotta call my buddy and congratulate him on his booger box. Oh. And maybe I'll buy one. You think he has camo? Yes, he has camo, it's Wisconsin. Duh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Catch I you later, dudes and dudettes. He's a character. All right, kids, you can sit right on the floor down here. You can cop a squat. Yep, sit crisscross applesauce. So we're going to show you a video in just a second. All right. You guys got it? But don't worry. It's not a scary room. All right. Check out this video. This year for our Beyond Kids missions, we are giving to an organization through BGMC, which is Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge, where we're partnering with Trent and Tina Morrow to help build a summer camp for kids in Uruguay. Our kids are so extremely generous and faithful in their giving, we encourage them to host lemonade stands all throughout this summer. We've had multiple families participate in this challenge and we've seen such amazing results. We want to share one of our kids' stories with you so we can celebrate together. The money that we get from the people, half of it is going towards, is going towards missions in Uruguay, which is helping them build the camp, telling them about Jesus. So as a parent, it's been really fun to help Nora and to support Nora um, raising money for missions um, because it's cultivating this heart inside of her for others and it's getting her to focus um, more on giving to others um, and it's just been really fun watching her understand that the money is going to help other people learn about Jesus. Man, I love it. I love that our kids do stuff like that. Um, can we give a huge round of applause to all of our kids in the front row for being such good sports and giving to missions? That's awesome, man. We love you guys. All right, kids, uh, we have some crayons and some paper at the front for you. So everybody up front, why don't you grab right now, go ahead and some, grab some paper and some crayons. Don't use it quite yet. We'll tell you what it's for in just a few minutes, but go ahead and grab some. And then you guys can head back to your seats. So parents, maybe if they need a little bit of help, you can help them out. But go ahead and grab some crayons and some paper, and then you guys can head back to your seats. Uh, we love you, kids. You're awesome. 
You need some more? We good? I got, I got one. That's okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, well, hey, I know that all of these kids uh, aren't awesome on their own. It takes, like Pastor Eric said, a church to help make these kids awesome. And so we're going to congratulate and thank all of the parents in the room as well. So if you're a parent in the room, can we give a huge round of applause to all of our parents? You guys are phenomenal. And then kids in the room, if you love Pastor Jen or parents in the room, if you're thankful for Pastor Jen and the uh, culture that she's instilling into your kids and teaching them to be generous um, and to love Jesus, can we give uh, her a huge round of applause as well? Thank you, Pastor Jen. You're incredible. <laughs> uh, I hope that you guys aren't too tired from clapping today. We're probably gonna do that a few more times. Uh, but that's kind of the point of today. If you didn't catch it from Pastor Jen's skit, uh, the big idea of today is we don't hate, we congratulate. So I'm gonna have you guys say that with me this time. Ready on three. One, two, three. We don't hate, we congratulate. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. So that is our big idea for today. Man, I love when we get to include, uh, include elements from kids' service into, into big church. It's so much fun. Um, quick question for you guys, though, and this is going to require just a little bit of honesty. And, and Pastor Eric asked earlier, so I'm going to ask again. Raise your hand if you've ever met a jealous person. Okay. And here's where you have to be honest. Raise your hand if you've ever been a jealous person. I've definitely been there, okay? Most of us in the room. Uh, there's no judgment in that, right? We've all, we've all been there. It's really easy to kind of put the focus on ourselves sometimes. Uh, and so, as some of you may know, we live in what's called a me-centered society, right? So it's what I want to do when I want to do it because it's what I want to do. And so we really focus on the I, on me, on self. And if you guys have lived in our world for any point of time, you've either been that person or you've met that person person. So for kids, maybe this means you're like, I don't really care what my brother and sister want. I'm going to eat the last Oreo, right? Or yeah, maybe adults. Hey, I'm, yeah, I've been that. I've been that adult that wants to eat that last Oreo, the last slice of pizza. Uh, for adults in the room, maybe it's been like, hey, you're, you're up for a job promotion at work and you really want that promotion and so you're going to do whatever you can to get it and it doesn't matter who you steamroll or what you do to get that job. So we want what's best for us. That's kind of the culture that we've begun to live in. But what that means is that we can be disappointed when things are going well for other people, whether we want to be or not. Sometimes we get frustrated that other people have the things that we want, like the booger box, right? Or that other people get recognition when we aren't. Or sometimes it can be hard to celebrate somebody uh, because we want the thing that they're celebrating for, whether that's um, the job promotion, whether that's being pregnant, whether that's having the extra Oreo or the extra scoop of ice cream at dinner or youth, uh, you get that last slice of pizza, right? So it, it can be difficult for us to celebrate those things. But as Christ followers, as people that believe in Jesus and are trying to model our lives after him, it's important that we push back against that culture and say, hey, that's not how we're supposed to live. That's not how Jesus lived. He came to serve and to elevate others, right? And so we're called to do the same, to push back against that me-centered culture. So in Philippians 2.4, it says, let each of you not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So that's saying, hey, we shouldn't just be concerned about ourselves. We shouldn't just be thinking about us. We shouldn't just be thinking about what we want, what I want. But it's, hey, what do you want? What do you want? And it's, it's celebrating people that had awesome things happen. It's honoring people for, for their achievements. It's honoring and, and encouraging one another. That's the role that we're supposed to play in each other's lives. We're supposed to lift each other up to encourage and to celebrate. In Romans 12, 15, it, uh, it says to be happy with those who are happy. So we're supposed to celebrate with one another. We're supposed to encourage one another. We're supposed to lift one another up. It's, it's what we're meant to do. So, as Christ followers, again, we are meant to honor God, and we're meant to honor each other. And kids, I know honor can be a little bit confusing, and I'm sure Pastor Jen does a much better job of explaining it than I do, um, but essentially, honor just means that we lift somebody up, right? We encourage them, we offer them a smile, we do something that will brighten their day, maybe we do give them that last Oreo, right? It's, it's, it's doing something to put other people first. And most of all, it's recognizing and celebrating what God is doing in us and what he's doing through us. 
So in Romans, again, it talks about giving honor where honor is due. So this is something that we're supposed to be in a habit of. It's not a one-time thing, but it's supposed to be a daily practice of giving honor, of lifting people up, of encouraging others. And so today, uh, I want to give an example of that. So I'm gonna invite uh, one of my youth students, Sade, to come up and to share a little bit. So if you guys could give her a huge round of applause as she makes her way on up to the stage. So Sade is absolutely incredible. Uh, she just moved here this summer, and uh, this she's been here for what? Has it been, been about three months now? Four months? Three months? Two months? Okay, so <laughs> she's awesome. She just moved here from, where'd you move here from? North Carolina. Why don't you hold the mic up so they can hear you a little bit more? I'm from North Carolina. It's on. You're good. So she's from North Carolina, and uh, she's been around for the past couple of months, and I've had the privilege of getting to know her, and she's seriously absolutely incredible. God's been doing so much in her life in the past few months, and so we just wanted to give the chance for her to share a little bit more about her story, what God's been doing, uh, what she's been learning, and so this is our way of, of honoring God and what he's doing and, and showing how he's now using um, Sade to honor other people as well. And so can you explain a little bit about what your relationship with God looked like before you moved here versus where it's at now? Okay, so I was trying to build a better relationship. I went to a Christian school, um, so I was trying to build it and get a little bit more stronger. But I also didn't have a great role model to show me how to apply that, like trying to get a better relationship with him. So, yeah. That's awesome. So, since you've been here, you've been able to get a little bit more involved in the community, meet some new, meet, meet some new people, learn some new skills, and you've learned a little bit more how to, how to do that, right? Like, how to have a relationship with God. Awesome. Um, so, a few weeks ago, we had summer camp. We've told you guys a lot about camp, and it seriously was such an amazing experience. Shade was one of our students that got to go on it. Um, would you mind sharing just a little bit for them some of the things that you learned on camp? Maybe one thing that stood out to you that, that you learned or took away or something that God taught you? What I learned was to forgive. I have a hard time trying to forgive people and for what they do towards me that I don't like. So, no, I've learned how to forgive and just move on with life. So. That's awesome, that's awesome. Um, I love that because I think sometimes even when we, when we initially think of honoring, right, it's, it's all the good stuff, but sometimes honoring people can be really difficult. Sometimes it does look like forgiveness, sometimes it does look like honoring people that maybe we feel like don't deserve to be honored or that are really difficult to honor. And so it's so cool that God's been working in her life um, and teaching her how to forgive. Um, can you share a little bit more about that, what it's been like for you to learn forgiveness specifically? Um, I know you, you told me that you were learning to fig forgive your mom. So would you mind sharing just a little bit about that as well? Okay, so my first step was at camp. Um, Bridget had us write a letter of, to someone about forgiveness. I chose my mom to forgive her, and I wrote a letter to her. I sent it to her, and I prayed about it. and. I was able to have a better conversation with her about everything and how I've been feeling. And I got everything off my chest. And now we are building a better relationship. It's just a start. So right now it's still like a little tension, but it's, it's fine, we're perfect. That's awesome. Wow, that's awesome. That's so cool. Um, well, hey, thank you so much for, for being an example of God moving and working in your life. Can you give her one last round of applause as she heads off the stage? That is awesome, seriously, like, honoring people can be difficult sometimes, right? Kids, honoring your brother or your sister that's driving you nuts can be difficult sometimes. Adults in the room, honoring people that are frustrating or annoy you, that can be difficult sometimes. Honoring people that have hurt you, that's even harder. And so that's so cool that Shada was uh, able to share just a little bit of her story. I hope that's an encouragement to you. And how cool that we then get to honor God by, by glorifying him and praising him for the work that he's doing in our lives and through our lives. So it's so cool. Uh, so as God's moving, as he's working, it's our job then to celebrate that, to celebrate what God's doing and to celebrate others. So Again, our job, it's, it's to honor one another, to lift them up and to encourage them. So today, we're gonna work on that, trying to take the focus off of ourselves just for a minute and say, God, how can I love just a little bit more like you today? 
how can I put others first just a little bit more like you today? And so in Common, uh, which is the youth group around here, if you're, not, if you're not aware, we do sixth grade through 12th grade. And in Common, we've gotten into this habit of, of honoring one another. And any student in the room, any squad leader in the room knows that as we sit down for squads each week, that that's just a practice that we begin to put in. And so for five minutes, super short, super quick, we just allow the students to honor one another, to encourage one another, to lift one another up. And so it's a very simple, uh, simple template that they use. And it's, I want to shout out so-and-so because of so-and-so. I want to honor blank for blank. I want to thank blank for blank. And it's turned into this really cool moment where instead of kids getting all clicky or where they're just thinking about themselves or they're jealous or they're frustrated about other people, they're excited to honor one another. And a lot of times that five minute time slot that we've allotted for them, they just want to breeze past it. And I literally have to be like, okay, 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 that's awesome that you guys want to keep doing this, but we actually need to move on to something else. And so we've created this culture of honoring, and it's so cool to see it in our kids and then to see how they're excited to encourage one another, not only in CLF and in youth group, but then they're excited to encourage one another in their schools and their family. And so it's been awesome to see. Uh, I think it's really cool because we, I mean, we all know, we all like to be celebrated, right? Raise your hand if you like to be celebrated. Seeing, known. Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> I don't know if I do, because we all like to be loved, right? We all like to be acknowledged. We all like to be thought of that we're special. Um, in Proverbs 18.21, it says that the tongue has the power of life and death. And so that means our words matter. The things that we say to one another matter. The way we treat one another matters. And so today, we're going to choose just to give a little bit of life. We're gonna choose to lift each other up a little bit, to honor, to encourage, to celebrate. And so for these next 30 seconds, I'm gonna pray for us. But during this prayer, I just want you to be asking God, God, would you just give me a name of somebody that I'm supposed to honor today? Maybe that's the name of a coworker, a friend, uh, a peer. Maybe it's somebody in this room. But just be praying that God gives you a name of somebody that you're supposed to honor, to lift up, to encourage, to thank them for the impact that they've had on your life. So I'm going to pray. Would you just join me in that prayer and ask for a name today? Um, dear Jesus, we just thank you for the opportunity to gather. Lord, I pray that right now, just in these few moments, uh, maybe you already give it, gave us the name, but I pray that if you haven't, you would continue to give us the name of somebody that we're supposed to reach out to. You. Maybe somebody that needs a little bit of extra encouragement today, someone who needs a reminder of the impact that they've had on our lives. Lord, I pray that you'd give us the name of someone who needs to be lifted up today, who's hurting, who maybe walked through something difficult, and they just need a little bit of encouragement. Lord, I pray that you'd give us the name of somebody that um, we need to remind of the impact that they've had on our lives, whether it's somebody that we speak to daily and we take for granted, or maybe somebody that, that we haven't spoken to in years. Lord, I pray that you'd give us the name of somebody that, that just needs to hear from you today and needs to know that you're looking out for them and that they're seen and that they're loved. Give us the name of someone who maybe reached a new milestone and it was difficult for us to celebrate and we've been harboring a little bit of bitterness towards them. Give us the name of someone who we don't want to honor, who's maybe hurt us but needs to be honored. So Lord, I just pray that you would soften our hearts as we begin um, to lift people up and speak life over them today. Amen. Amen. So now the hard part, or the fun part in my opinion, is we're going to take the next two to three minutes and do that and honor them. So don't do it quite yet. Stick with me just for a second. Um, but I know, like I said, even with Shade's story, right, sometimes it's difficult to honor people whether it's because we're struggling to, to acknowledge their success, maybe it is because they hurt us, maybe just because it's a little bit uncomfortable and we ha we're not in the habit of that, so it's difficult to do. So I understand that we're asking you guys to step outside of your comfort zones a little bit, but here's what I want you to imagine. I want you to imagine a culture, creating a culture where we do begin to honor people. When people tell us their dreams, we encourage those dreams, we lift those dreams up, that we champion them. When people are excited and they tell us about an awesome opportunity that we had, that we're so enthusiastic for them and that they feel like people have their backs. I want you to imagine being that friendly face for somebody that maybe had a really, really, really hard day, whether that was somebody that you knew or somebody that you didn't know. Uh, I just want you to, to picture a culture where instead of society tearing each other down, we're, we're living in this cancel culture, right? Where, where we're trying to one-up each other, that instead we would build each other up, that we would celebrate one another, that we would love one another, and then think of the impact that that's had on your life when people do that for you. So for these next two to three minutes, let's do that. So if you have a phone, right now, pull out your phone. 
If you're a kid, uh, now is your time to, to, to use your pen and your crayons, and I'll explain. So right now, you can begin to text somebody and encourage them. Let them know of the impact that they've had on their life, on your life. Thank them. Lift them up. Uh, we have some, some pens and some paper by the communion. If you don't have pens or paper, they look like this. They're little thank you cards or thinking of you cards. And so you can actually take these, write in it, and then mail it to somebody after service today. Uh, so if you want pens and paper, they're right by the communion. You can do that as well. Kids, maybe you just draw somebody a really special picture. You say, hey, I'm thinking of you. Thank you for this. So use your pens and use your paper to draw a really special picture. I'm going to take my phone and I'm going to send a text right when you guys are. So even right now, in this moment, as we're doing it right now, pull out your phone, send that text, write that little letter, uh, draw that special picture, and we're just going to take a few minutes to speak life today. If we could get some fun music going, that would be awesome, just so people know when to wrap up. Perfect, thank you. You can send this text to more than one person. Send it to a couple of people. See how many people's days you can make today. So just another minute or two, keep on going. I'm texting right now as well. about one more minute. Keep sending those texts. Keep writing those little letters. Maybe for some of you, you even need to write the words and, and actually call somebody up later and have a voice-to-voice -voice conversation, a face-to-face -face conversation. So you can start drafting that as well. All right, about 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds. I sent two texts and they're already replying back to me. So I love this. I got, I got even more folks and I'm gonna hit up second service. As we close today, I wanna remind us, God rules and over rules. He is King and Lord of all. The promise that he made at the beginning of Genesis, when, when sin entered the world and God said, hold up Eve, from you, from your line, from your lineage, there will come a Messiah and he's gonna crush the head of the serpent. And even throughout the, our story that we read today, we see that God establishes something unique, the people of Israel, the tribe of Israel, and sets up a, a, a small savior, if you will, through Joseph, who gets, and if you, we're gonna talk about the rest of the story later next week, so I don't wanna ruin it, but he is used to save the Israelites to save his family and to save the promises of God. And I just thought about the brothers in this moment who get so jealous of their brother, Joseph. And I wonder sometimes that in our jealousy, what if we are on the opposite side of God's plan? You ever thought about that? Like in their jealousy, their brothers, his brothers tried to kill him. They tried to stop the promises of God. Is it possible that our jealousy would put us places on the opposite side of God's will? Let's be careful about that. Let's be mindful of that. And so today, 
I'm thankful that God, again, rules and overrules. His promises will be fulfilled. His commitment that he made to us will be fulfilled. And so we can look ahead all the way to the coming Messiah and Jesus. We can look ahead to Jesus fulfilling that promise that was made all the way back in the, in the, in the book of Genesis at the beginning of this thing. And today we're gonna celebrate through communion that sacrifice and that promise being fulfilled. And so if you haven't yet picked up communion or if you're joining us online and you need to get your communion elements, run and grab something that's gonna uh, represent the bread and something that's gonna represent the cup. If you're here in person and you haven't yet grabbed the communion elements, you can do that. While you're doing that, I wanna explain real quick. At CLF, we practice what is called open communion. What that means is you don't need to be a member here at CLF. Scripture teaches that in order to come to God's table, in order to come to the, the, to the Lord's Supper, the table of the Lord, we need to have confessed with our mouth, believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord. We have to be a Christian. And so at that moment, then we can celebrate the Lord's table. We can celebrate communion today. And if you haven't yet made a commitment to follow Jesus, I wanna invite you to do that real quick. And this is, we, I say this all the time to our youth and this is for our kids, but this is definitely for our adults. It's as simple as A, B, C. You need to A, admit that you're a sinner. Admit you don't have it figured out. B, you gotta believe Jesus. You gotta believe who he says he is, that he is the savior of the world. You gotta believe it. He is the Messiah. And you gotta see, you gotta confess. You gotta confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. And so today, even as we've been breaking down these big ideas into simple truths that we can all understand, there's a great truth that I wanna invite us all to today. If you haven't yet, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. I believe this is your moment to do that. So from young to old, I wanna invite you. So I wanna invite every eye to be closed right now. No one looking around the room. We're in a second, we're gonna pray. But if that's you today, if you're saying, I have not yet, done what scripture tells us, which is to admit that I'm a sinner, believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I want to invite you to do that today, just as an outward sign of this big, awesome inward decision. If you would just raise your hand today, you're saying, I want to be a Christian. I don't have it all figured out, but I want to be a Christian. And I want to be able to celebrate today that my life, my eternity is secure in heaven. Awesome. I don't see any hands raised. So I believe in today that everyone's already made that commitment. And let me just say this, if you haven't yet made that commitment, you can do that. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Come and talk to us after service, all right? Thank you so much. If you're joining us online uh, and you want prayer for something, go ahead and put that in the chat. But you guys can open up your eyes. In a second, we're gonna pray for our communion, but let's go ahead and just kind of peel back that top layer and we're gonna hold the bread in our hands. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26, Paul writes, and he says this, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Today, we are honoring God. We're celebrating Jesus and the broken body of Jesus. Hold that in your hand for a second and we're gonna pray. Father, we come before you we celebrate your promise being fulfilled through Jesus. We celebrate the broken body and salvation that was opened up to all of us, that we can live with eternity in mind. We can live in the promises of God. We can live with a purpose in our lives. We thank you for that. Thank you for the broken body. Let's take the bread. Now you can peel back that communion. Let's hold that cup in our hands. Scripture goes on, it says, in the same way, also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is my new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's hold that in our hand and we're gonna pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that was poured out on Calvary. Through the blood of Jesus, we have forgiveness of sins. Through the blood of Jesus, we have healing power. We have new life. We thank you that we are born again into the family of God because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We love you, Jesus. We celebrate you today. We pray this in your mighty name, amen. Let's take the cup. I wanna invite us all to stand today. We're gonna get ready to close. Go ahead and stand up, stand up, stand up. Kids, this is your time. You can jump up even. It's all right, you can jump up. 
Even even uh, us sages, us gray hairs, can jump up a little bit sometimes. Hey, hey. When we get together as as a church family like this, and we have young to old in the room, it is an exciting moment for us. It is an exciting time for us. And so thank you guys. Thank you for, for bringing your kids in. Thank you for, for helping them stay focused <laughs> throughout the entire time today. And for all of us uh, seasoned saints of the Lord, I want to thank you that you are investing and loving the generations to come. I know it's not easy when you go, you know, those songs we used to sing, uh, I miss those songs, but we're singing songs that are going to be the songs for this generation and the generations to come. So thank you for your investment. Thank you for your love. And thank you for praying for this next generation because uh, we believe they're world changers. We believe God's raising up a remnant that's going to go and be true disciples of Jesus in every space and place in our world today. All right. God bless you guys. Go forth today in grace and peace. And don't forget about our foster love meeting right after second service. We'll see you guys next week.